Well, I'm heading over to Montana Metal Art to meet Cameron Marcou, and uh, might wonder what Montana Metal Art has to do with a hunting trip, but I met Cameron through Montana Metal Art because he did some of the metal work on our new home, and uh, turned out he was quite a hunter and become a good friend and also is pretty in tune with the uh, long range shooting sort of stuff. And he also has his FFL license. So I had a new Browning X-Bolt long range pro in 6.5 Creedmoor sent to him. So I'm gonna go pick it up. I've got a new Vortex Razor HD AMG scope. Uh, turrets on it, which I've never had before. He's gonna help me mount it. Uh, discuss how to get it sighted in, zeroed at 100, and then I think eventually we'll go shoot it together and he'll uh, help build a dope chart and everything. So, anxious to go check out this gun and get the scope mounted. Hi, Willie. How you doing, Cam? Good. Good. Ready to do this? Slide a few more. Wind at 11.30 with a three mile an hour. Elevation's 9.94 up with a wind of half a, half a minute. Oh, good. So that was 100, 650 yards. We saw the bullet trace go center target. Uh -huh. um, we're just uh, off of center, we're probably three inches low so we could adjust your dope chart off of that so 650 yards that's uh, half a minute basically um, so we can adjust your muzzle velocity to get that right so it's all center mm -hmm. if you want to do that real quick we can uh, tune that up and then that way your everything's just your dope charts nuts so but you're shooting good yeah uh, 530 you hit that twice in a row so I mean that's kind of like the average shot you're gonna to want to take probably at a hunting trip. But yeah, we'll awesome. can, we'll continue shooting and we'll probably go out to 757 um, just to make sure that, I mean, the further you shoot and you tune your your ballistics, the yeah. better everything below that will be. Sure. So um, you, it, that you'll finite that. Okay. Uh, and then at a 10 mile an hour is 3.75 and you have half of that. So tell me when you're gonna shoot. Okay, I'm about ready. Okay. Okay. I would say that would be really good. Well, I arrived a couple hours earlier than Willie did. I'm in the Anchorage airport, and this is the beginning of our 2019 doll sheep hunt in Alaska. It's August 6th, and I just got a text from Willie saying he just landed, so he should be here shortly. But uh, I've been training all summer, got in sheep shape, or at least I think I got in sheep shape, and. Uh, Let's see how we fare with the doll sheep. How are you doing? What's going on, man? Flight, That's good. Are you going to wheel that? Or? I'll wheel this. Now we can figure out where we're going. So where are we going? Arctic Adventure. Arctic Adventure Hostel. I called a dozen places, they all were booked. So hotels.com found this. It's a, a bed hostel. and it's dry and it's a hostel. It's a hostel. So, uh, yep, got the address. Let's go find us a That's taxi it? or an Uber. That's it. All right. Well, we got to the hostel and the reservation, and there was no reservation. Hmm. And the problem is that every place in Anchorage, literally every place that probably halfway decent is booked so 
proprietor's got their RV, and that's where we'll be staying tonight. We're staying in the owner of the hostel's RV. But a word to the wise, summer in Alaska is very, very busy. Don't think I'll make my reservation down the road and think you have plenty of time, because you don't. I tried that. And now we're staying there. <laughs> so here's Chris's bed and his gear. I got to sleep in the slightly larger than twin last night. We've just crammed all of our gear inside here and uh, just sitting in the parking lot. I'd be otherwise home sweet home for two days. First world problems, um, staying in an RV versus a hostel room. This may end up being a little more comfortable than a mountainside for 10 days. I didn't know I was taking the clamps out. <laughs> you are. <laughs> wow. We're slumming it. If we can, we will clover leaf. You know, we'll land in a spot and then like, okay, we know there's some sheep over there. They're like six hours away. So. Get fired up. Just met with Scott, went through all of our gear list. We pretty much have everything we need. And as we expected, we brought more than we would need. So we'll leave a bunch of stuff. We're just going to spend this afternoon and evening, getting our gear ready, all in our backpacks. Yep. The stuff we're gonna leave, put it in a different bag, and uh, they'll keep it in the hangar for the week. Yep. I'm so freaking pumped. We're going on a sheep hunt, baby. I know, it's been nuts. It's carbo load, man. It's carbo load for tomorrow. All right. That's what we're doing. Lots of bread, our last meal, non-freeze-dried meal for 10 days, basically. We're off and running, like in Alaska. Wait, 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 and then time to go, so fly out, weather cleared, heading off into the wild blue yonder. down got on the main airstrip and now Chris and I'll hang out here for a couple hours Scott will go scout and figure out where he wants to come pick us up so we'll be here for a couple hours it looks like couldn't have asked for a better weather day to fly though awesome. all right well going on. I'll see you on the other side Chris yeah you must have uh, obviously you found out uh, Scott found out where he wants to go so I'll get dropped off Chris will follow Just around the corner here? Yeah. You know, in the face, that face there? Uh -huh. I didn't know what they were. Cheap. Yeah. And then there's up the river bottom, turn left, and then see that mountain there? Yeah. Up that cut, there's, he says, at least one good ram. Oh, okay. So cool. We'll get camp set up and have yeah. some dinner and probably turn in early. It's been, yeah. we haven't done squat today, but yeah. it's been a long day. Yeah. So. our uh, second day season opens tomorrow so we made a camp here last night Scott had scouted and had some sheep above us and below us and now we've made a game plan for this afternoon to hike up the valley about three miles and set up a spike camp leaving a lot of stuff here and going after ram or two that he saw uh, yesterday so anyway if it gets to be 1201 tomorrow morning opening day take the shot but I don't think that's our plan. We'll get in, we'll set up camp, just hang out there glass, see what's going on from there. We may not be able to see where the rams were when you saw them yesterday. And then first thing in the morning make a play on them. So all this uh, prepping and getting around, waiting for the weather, waiting for flights, 
has finally come to fruition and we're getting ready to make a move. You ready to go? Yep. Here we are uh, heading up that valley up there. We're on that mountain. According to the forecast, it's only going to be 10% today. That's turning into more and some low clouds are rolling in. That's the kicker about Alaska is you can make all the best plans and take off and it can change really in a heartbeat. So you just kind of take it <laughs> minute by minute, hour by hour. And you may have to turn around and call it. If this pass we're going to go over is socked in, we'll have to sit and wait for a bit, see if it clears up. If not, that may be it for the day, but we'll wait and see. Normally you're this excited with opening day, and I was yesterday, which was opening day, but uh, weather sort of blew us out of where we wanted to get to, so Woke up this morning to bright blue skies, sunshine. It's uh, 925 and we got a full day ahead of us to get up to where Scott saw some sheep a couple days ago. We got to get there and find out if they're still there. Who knows, we may bump into something on the way up there, but we got a few hour hike to uh, get to where you last saw them. But it sure does feel a lot better having the sunshine out. right in the bottom of the grass there. I mean, right there. They haven't moved 400 yards. Time to moosey down and see if we can find something else. Okay. Beautiful day on the mountain. A couple yep. hours to camp. Yeah. Okay. But at least it's all downhill. way back down from those three rams and uh, saw these five, four ewes and a, and a lamb and just wanted to, got about 465 yards from them and then saw another group of five way the heck off up on top of a ridge. But we're seeing sheep, just like to see some rams, more rams and legal rams. But we're early in the hunt, and uh, we're a little worried about the weather the next few days. Can't control that. We'll just keep after it and see what happens. But we probably have about another hour back to camp. My Crocs are going to feel good. A mountain house is going to feel good. And ibuprofen is going to feel good and a good night's sleep. Day four of the hunt, and we'll hunker down with the rain and the clouds. Scott says, a little rain, doesn't mind hunting through, but it doesn't make sense to leave and not be able to see what you're hunting. And right now, it's pretty well socked in. So, we are hunkered under the tarp, having our coffee. Scott's communicating with the other guides, and uh, we're just sitting here. Not much else to do. different than six o'clock this morning. All right, it's high noon. We're finally getting out of here. So I think we have a good plan. Scott feels confident in it. And that gonna, is? Well, head up that ridge, get up on top, and there's a couple of bowls we can look into. Plus, once we get up on top, 
be able to look across where you saw those rams way off in the distance. And right. We may never not see them again, but if they stay on that side of that ridge, we'd have to get right below them or way over here to see them. But he's had some success in these other bowls, and it's not a it's an all day, but not a all day. Yeah, yeah, it's not a till three in the morning. Yeah, huh? and assuming the weather doesn't roll in or nothing really bad, it seems like it's getting a little thicker. But as long as it doesn't just dump on us, we ought to be all right. We spotted them on the other side of the river, actually where we came from. They disappeared in a cut and then uh, lost sight of them for a while and then they crossed the river and they're up basically where we stopped yesterday and where Chris lost his microphone. They're right down there. and. doing the sheep thing. Well, we're heading back to camp. It took us about five hours to get to the top of the mountain, check out all the bowls. And we stood up there and glassed for quite a bit. Yeah. This is a little update from when the sun was shining and we debated about heading out, but the forecast was not good. Good call, Scott. <laughs> Well, isn't this fun? <laughs> I'm glad we brought these. Yes. But as we said, can't control the weather and Alaska is known for this. There's still hope. It's supposed to clear up. The forecast is, this is the only time it's been wrong, but I think it just changed and got worse. I think it just, it, yeah. But it's gonna improve tomorrow. Coming down to the wire. Good news is we did see a ram last night. It was from a long ways off, but it looked to be pretty good. So that's the direction we're heading this morning. So we're hoping we can seal the deal here in the 11th hour. Yep. Let's do it. Okay. What do you think, Chris? No. Not even. I'd say three quarter at best. Well, our Alaska Adventure 2019 is over. Yeah. But it's a great adventure. It was a great adventure. I think anybody looking for an Alaskan hunt needs to put it on their bucket list, whether, whether you're successful or not. But I think a lot of people will look at an unsuccessful hunt and think bad hunters not prepared a guy who didn't know what he was doing. Look, it's hunting, and, and I can confidently say in both cases it was none of those. Yeah. Scott knows the area, he's hunting around here, he's successful. You and I always stay in shape, and you not kicked it up a notch, and you know, we didn't hold the guy back. You know, I've hunted together a lot of years, yeah. so I'm glad we put it yeah. together. I'm just sorry it wasn't. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely, buddy. we had a ton yeah. of fun. This hunt didn't end the way Chris and I, and even Scott for that matter, had envisioned. We fully expected to take at least one, if not two, mature rams on this hunt. That doesn't mean it wasn't an exciting adventure, and we still had a great time. Sometimes, even on bucket list or more expensive hunts, you come away empty-handed. There are no guarantees, and it's not how we define true success or our enjoyment of a hunt.